How I Do Holep for BPH by Fernando Gomez Sancha and Moises Rodriguez Ocarras. We're very pleased to be participating in this project from the Brazilian Society of Urology. And I'm going to introduce you to the en bloc uh, holep, en bloc enucleation. In this case, we had a man with a 168cc prostate. So quite a large one and there was a lot of bleeding at the apex which made the apical dissection a little bit more difficult so in cases like this what we do is we try to mark at 12 o'clock just past the sphincter proximal to the sphincter to have a reference and then uh, we go near the barrel to find the plane of the adenom adenoma and dissect it carefully, not pushing too much uh, laterally, so we can see where the posterior edge of the adenoma is lying. Here again on the other side, a similar maneuver is carried out. Opening the plane between adenoma and capsule. And then, of course, we have to try to connect the 12 o'clock mark with the lower aspect carefully to preserve the sphincter's mucosa. The wonderful aspect of this approach is that we will preserve the sphincter's mucosa and that will uh, provide the patient with immediate uh, perfect continence uh, and it will reduce the chance of stress, uh, temporary stress urinary incontinence that we have seen with the classic technique. In the classic technique, the dissection of the lateral lobe at the apex is carried out without even looking at the sphincter and often it results in the deepithelization of the sphincter. So this is the marking of the white line, so it is a circumferential line that demarcates the limit of the apex with the limit of the adenoma. Then we have to connect both lateral apical planes in the midline by cutting the frenulum of the vera montanum to connect the two lines of dissection, the two lines of attack that we have demarcated apically and then develop progressively the posterior plane. This development of the posterior plane can be done very fast it's quite easy, it's important to keep a wide line that goes from side to side because that keeps orientation and not always we can see a perfect clear plane of separation between adenoma and capsule and keeping these lines around the adenoma is going to help us when it is not so clear where the plane is. Here you can see that the sphincter has been preserved, the white line is a little bit more inside and now we're going to start with the apical dissection. For that, and in order to release the, the sphincter from the adenoma, we have to cut a little bit in the edge, like deepening the white line that we marked at the beginning, even cutting a little bit on the adenoma. We don't mind cutting for three, four, five millimeters in the adenoma because that will actually detach the apex of the prostate from the sphincter and it will give us better access to this plane. I like to do an initial posterior apical dissection and deepen it towards the bladder neck until I can connect with the posterior line of attack, posterior line that we had done, because it's important to be able to go around the adenoma and to have a continuous line that connects the lateral plane with the posterior plane, with the anterior plane. So it's very important to connect the lines that we are developing. Here, of course, we want to protect the sphincter and as we come more anterior, the cutting has to be a little bit more horizontal. So initially we do a cut, even a little bit in the adenoma, we don't mind because that will give us some space to, to access the apex and to develop it carefully with the energy of the holmium laser. In this case, we are using a pulse modulated laser. This is the Quanta system, uh, 150 watt laser at settings in two joules and 50 hertz. 
uh, with the virtual basket setting. It is a very nice uh, advance in the technology of the consoles that provide excellent first pass coagulation and excellent uh, cutting properties. So it has enhanced uh, the properties of the laser we use for HOLEP. So here you can see that careful ascension. Well, carefully we have to ascend until we can position ourselves on top of the adenoma anteriorly. When we get to that point anteriorly, uh, on one side, then we have to go to the other side, and this is the other side, the right side of the patient, and we are doing the same maneuver, just coming up, incising a little bit the area here between the sphincter and the adenoma. On the adenoma, we don't mind, as I said, deepening a little bit this incision because what I, we are really achieving is disinserting or you know separating the tip of the adenoma from the sphincter. Of course, once we get the axis we want, we can go and look for the proper plane. So often these incisions that we made are going to be uh, uh, removed with the adenoma. So here's the ascension on the right side and we will try to get towards 12 o'clock where we will find the anterior uh, 12 o'clock uh, fibers that uh, we will be able to cut much easier when the scope can be on top of the adenoma as these uh, 12 o'clock fibers will verticalize when we push the tip of the adenoma a little bit down, downwards. So here we are completing the connection between both sides and this is the finalization of the early apical release. We believe that releasing the apex early in the operation helps protecting the sphincter against traction and mechanical uh, tear. Uh, so this uh, early apical dissection combined with an end block approach allows us to do a very fast and very safe operation, which I think improves uh, the outcomes that we would get with the three lobe or the two lobe classic techniques. The wonderful aspect of this technique as well is that we are irrigating a very small space and the irrigation of this small space is going to provide us with uh, excellent visibility throughout the procedure. We have seen some bleeders and typically in the big large glands like this we are going to see them and uh, this is an interesting graph on the lower right side of the screen. Keep an eye on it because it, it represents how we have to change the aiming of the laser as we uh, change or as we deepen our dissection. Initially we can fire against the line of attack, we should never fire against the capsule, but as we turn uh, around the, the angle of the adenoma we have to start pointing our laser a little bit more close to the adenoma. And this is very very important when we do it especially in the posterior aspect. This is the anterior dissection, so we can go from side to side. Remember, always we want to connect the lines we are doing so that when we are anterior, we can connect easily with the lateral aspect and then we can connect easily with the posterior aspect. This is the development of the circumferential plane, the circumferential line of dissection that will uh, take us to the end of the procedure. It's important to position the scope so that the line of dissection is in the middle of the screen and this allows us to see half of the screen with adenoma and half of the screen with capsule. This is the vertical fibers of the bladder neck. It's a patognomonic sign that if we cut there we're going to enter the bladder uh, above the anterior commissure this is the mucosa of the bladder. There are many vessels at this level, so we have to be careful because there is a lot of mucosal bleeding that can uh, make morselation a little bit more, more difficult. This is the circumcision or the cutting of the bladder neck circumferentially following the anatomical planes. So all the anterior aspect of the prostate has been liberated 
and we are now cutting the bladder neck circumferentially. Here you can see how the camera and the scope have to look towards the line of dissection, the line of attack. And here we can judge uh, the depth of the dissection. And if we're going too deep, uh, we can correct by approximating the fiber and targeting the laser closer to the anoma. And if we are leaving tissue behind, we can always go a little bit uh, more lateral, more per peripheral to try and remove the tissue that we want to remove. Typically, the adenoma looks a little bit more yellow than the capsule that looks a little bit whiter. This is the incision of the bladder neck. When we get to this point, we have to uh, check the urethral orifice to avoid damaging it. And carefully, the energy is used to dissect the anatomical plane. The other pulse modulated technology that has come out is the MOSES uh, technology, which is uh, slightly different from uh, virtual basket. And they're both, uh, I think, revolutionizing the use of HOLEP because the quality of hemostasis is much better. You can concentrate on dissecting your plane without having to care for keeping a good hemostasis because it automatically happens. So when you do your dissection, you see the energy reaches a little bit further and provides better coagulation that allows you to concentrate just on working on the anatomy, on how to target the, the laser energy towards the line of dissection or a little bit closer to the anoma to adapt to the anatomy of the prostate and to prevent uh, going uh, deep in the capsule. Here we managed to elevate the adenoma, push it a little bit into the bladder, and that only gives us a good, better access to the bladder neck at 6 o'clock, where uh, the fibers are cut, remain, remaining fibers. And then, of course, if we keep the same rotation direction, it's very easy to tilt even very large adenomas, and uh, then of course, the six o'clock fibers that are attaching the adenoma to the bladder neck can be cut very safely and very precisely until the adenoma is detached completely and flipped into the bladder. So this uh, took about uh, 40 minutes in this case. We are typically able to complete these operations in around one hour, even for the very large glands, where we might need maybe 10 or 15 minutes more than the smaller uh, prostates. It's important to coagulate the mucosal vessels because these can bleed and they're a little bit difficult to see sometimes because they, they turn towards the bladder. The flow of the scope is pushing them inside and we don't see sometimes where the bleeding is coming. So we have to pay attention to the mucosal bleeders. And here you can see the excellent preservation of the sphincter. A little bit of hemostasis has to be carried out, especially in the very large glands, uh, not so much in the smaller glands. And then the other super important aspect of enucleation is the teamwork. You need to have proper, properly trained nurses that can help you very fast, very proficiently, because you might need to use a resectoscope, you might need to change to the uh, nephroscope that we use for morselation. If the morselation has a malfunction, they need to know how to tackle this and to solve it fast. And this way, uh, enucleation becomes a normal procedure that we can do, you know, we can do five cases in one session uh, from uh, 3 or 4 p.m. To, to 9 p.m., typically one hour per patient, including the change uh, of, of the patient in the operating room. So uh, many times for 60 gram prostate, 70 gram prostates, we can, we can use uh, even 20, 25 minutes. Morselation has to be carried out with care, uh, but it leads to the end of the procedure and I hope you have enjoyed this video 
There are plenty of uh, full-time videos in my YouTube channel that you can find easily online uh, if you want to learn. And my advice is watch a lot of videos, learn the anatomy, and you will be able to learn for sure to do holep. This is the tissue, this is the color of the urine at the end of the procedure. And thank you very much for your attention and for the invitation to participate in this project.